everybody welcome back to the channel today I'm just gonna do some painting uh, and I'm going to do my nautical wreath so this video is going to be probably over multiple days but first thing I wanted to do is um, you know just chat with y'all and to do some painting on my little wooden pieces that I picked up from Dollar Tree so if y'all haven't seen the video I'm going to link it up there on um, the nautical coastal items that they have at Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just gonna paint a, maybe one or two of the starfish and then a few dolphins and maybe a couple of turtles and a couple of seahorses and just chat with y'all. There has been some crazy stuff going on lately. And it's really, really gross. One of the little adventures of mine it's really gross so <laughs> I'm gonna put all kinds of emojis and warnings on this video but I'm gonna tell y'all uh, I had to look and see what color seahorses and starfishes were and seahorses sea can be multiple colors there are some um, like brownish yellow ones there are some red ones like a burnt um, orange reddish looking ones then some that are multiple colors like like a white and then like gets like a blackish color and then like a tan and then some starfishes same thing I saw some like burnt orange ones and some like yellowish ones the color of a loofah or a sponge you know natural color sponge and the dolphins and turtles you know different kinds of greenish blues so I'm thinking I'm going to paint my uh, seahorses this like reddish color like a burnt orange it looks to me and then the dolphins and the um, turtle I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna find some different kind of greenish blues and for the shell I wanted to try to use my marker here hopefully it doesn't look too bad I'm not a painter y'all but let me get my little bowl here that right there but the first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to do my uh, my dolphins so I want to use this color this is a satin paints I got this I believe at uh, Joann's yeah and I'm not sure the color it doesn't have a color on here oh yeah turquoise yes it does but y'all Y'all are not going to believe what I saw on Monday. I had to go over to Dallas on Monday. So on my way there, I had an appointment. I was going to be early. So I said, hey, there's a QT right up here. Let me stop over there, grab some lottery tickets. Because uh, me and my family, we do pulls, you know, Powerball Mega Millions when uh when it gets up there so i decided hey i'm gonna stop over here grab my tickets pick some numbers and all that go in there and get me some tickets when i walked in to the qt it was a truck stop let me back up a little bit when i pulled onto the lot homeless people's walking here there over in the dumpsters with their bikes leaned against the dumpsters climbing in there looking around and all that I'm like welcome to Dallas then I went into the store I walked in and there was this man he was between the the drinks and the roller items and right next to him was like you know the donuts and stuff in the little cabinet and he was standing there and I was like why is he making that noise and I looked and he just started peeing all over the floor right there. And I was like, that man's peeing on the floor. And they were like, I know we called the police already. I said this to the worker. I gave her my tickets and he was just, just peeing right there. And I was like, oh my goodness. Mind you, it's not like he was rushing and couldn't make it. He stood there, had his hands underneath this long shirt he was wearing and he had pulled like his underwear to the side and he was just peeing. I'm like, what in the world? 
And I was like, oh my goodness. And then he started pooping. I was like, ew, that's so gross. I was like, do you see him? She was like, I know. And they were like, call the police again. Call the police again. One of the workers were telling the other workers. I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, and he was just pooping everywhere. I'm like, oh my goodness. Ew. And people were just walking, you know, around, just carrying on like nothing. But everyone saw it. I mean, everyone saw it. This is such a pretty color for these dolphins. This turquoise. And then, I'm going to use another color for my, oh. And then, I mean, he just kept on. I'm like, oh my goodness. And after he was done, she was asking me questions, but I couldn't focus. I was like... Ew! And uh, she was like, did you want cash option or annual payments? Because I forgot to bubble it in. I was like, uh, uh, cash option. And when he was finished, she started walking around and they were like, sir, sir, stay right there. You're contaminating the whole store. You cannot come in here doing that. This is a place of business. I couldn't get out of there fast enough, y'all. He had some mental issues. It was obvious that he needed mental help. They were calling the police, but he needed some mental help. There should be a number, like 3131 or it's pound or something for mental help because a lot of times recently, when I say recently, I mean, you know, recent years. I'm going to try this color next. Aquamarine. A lot of times now, they don't need the police. They need mental help. There should be like a mental, you know, help kind of task force or something that can come out and help people. You know, uh, bring like a psychologist or therapist or, you know, uh, an aide to help. And maybe, you know, an officer who's trained to deal with people who need mental help. Because... He needed some mental help. And if you just call them and just let them know what's going on, if you don't specify it's mental help, I think the chances of things going real wrong with that call is a lot higher. Now, sometimes you can let them know, hey, I need some mental assistance for whatever reason, and it went real wrong. I've heard stories. I've seen, you know, stories online on news channels, stuff like that. But there needs to be more mental, you know, uh, mental help available to people, you know, just out and about. Because you can come across someone who's has a, you know, a mental break, not taking their medications or, you know, anything. And sometimes that is so pretty, the aquamarine for the turtle. And sometimes, color right there. All they need is someone, you know, who can, who knows how to deal with someone having, you know, an, a mental episode, a, a mental episode. And that's what that man was having. Because no man in his right mind would stand there, poop, in the middle of a convenience store, and then try to carry on like nothing. Because when she said, sir, stay right there. He was looking like, why? Like, what, what happened? I mean, that was his expression. But then I was out of there. I was like, oh my goodness. I could not, I've never in my life seen that before. And when I was leaving out, you know, there was, that area is known to have a bunch of homeless people and whatnot. I used to live like one street over, but on the other end, probably about four or five miles down. And whenever I would go that way, I would see, you know, a few, this was like 15 years ago I lived over there. Um, it was just a few homeless people. You know, every once in a while you would see them, you know, just walking because the QT wasn't there. So you would see them, you know, just walking in the area and whatnot. But now I hadn't been over there in about 15 years or so. They were like just all over the place. And a lot of times because it's a truck stop. People go in there, you know, asking for money, you know, uh, you know, diving through the dumpsters like the one man was doing. And it just brings out a lot of more people who are in need 
when it comes to, uh, you know, big, busy convenience stores, truck stops and stuff. But that was crazy. I've never in my life seen anything like that. And there really should be a number you can call when you need mental assistance with an officer, you know, who's maybe not armed with a gun, maybe a taser or, you know, uh, restraining items, something like that, because they having a mental episode. They shouldn't get shot for it. I mean, I understand some of them could have weapons, this, that, and the other, so get as much information as needed, but people trained to handle people who are having mental episodes should be able to go out and help them versus someone who's not trained to go out and, you know, handle the, uh, or deal with the situation. But that was, that was really, really gross, y'all. That was really gross. I've, I've never seen that, and if I never again see anything like that again in my life, I will be okay, okay not seeing that ever again. But... That was my adventures to Dallas, and I never go to Dallas. I like, never go to Dallas. They crazy over there. I would always like have bad experiences going to Dallas. The only time I go over there is like work, or if I'm in and out real quick, going to a restaurant or something that my husband recommends, something like that. But that was crazy, y'all. I gotta go clean off my brush. Okay, y'all. Uh, here is my turtle. And here are my dolphins. So I use aquamarine and turquoise. And here's the other one. So I'm going to let these dry. And I'm going to do my seahorses and my starfish. But, um... Uh, to give y'all a closer view of this and I'm going to use some of this orange color these are coming out so nice I like it I like the colors I'm kind of leery about drawing on my turtle <laughs> I'm not a drawer at all but Y'all know something else that I've been um, that I've been looking at. My husband was telling me yesterday. I thought it was some crazy sci-fi type stuff that Japan was doing. He said, uh, "Men are getting paid seventy-nine thousand to have babies in Japan." I'm like, "That's ridiculous." I was like, "What kind of crap is going on now? Men having baby? I'm thinking Junior and everything with." <laughs> but Arnold Schwarzenegger he's like you know they want uh, men to go over to Japan black men to go to Japan uh, and have kids with the Japanese women and I'm like that's ridiculous I was like what's wrong with their men he was like uh, they want black men to go do that and I'm like that's stupid I was like why would they want that like they don't have men so the Japanese men just cool with a bun bunch of foreigners going over there, you know, uh, taking their women. And he started pulling up all these YouTube and TikToks about it and people who are actually over there and they're explaining how it's going and what's going on and all. I'm like, that's dumb. I still, he was like, see, look, I was like, I still, I still don't believe it. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds ridiculous to me. This is such a pretty color for this seahorse. I was like, I still don't believe it. That sounds ridiculous. Like some, is there something wrong with their man? There we go, right there. But, he was explaining that. I'm like, mm, I don't know about all that. Now, for my, uh, for my starfish, I'm going to paint it this color. And I'm going to try to go in with my little black markers because there's circles on here. And try to color those in and see how that looks. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I don't believe it, but if it's true, oh, you can poke them out. Wait a minute, can you poke those out? Let me look. No, you can't. Uh, if it's true, 
Japanese men. Y'all gonna let a bunch of foreigners come over and take out women? <laughs> like, what's going on with that? But, whatever. I still don't believe it, but just because it's on TikTok and YouTube does not make does not make it true. But no, it's on TikTok. They said, they said. I'm like, that's just them. That's like four people. Like, whatever. And they probably heard the same thing, ran over there, thinking they finna get some money and get them a woman. But, sounds like nonsense to me. Oh, and here is this one. This is such a pretty color. This is gonna start making me think I know how to paint. <laughs> and the next one here. And I'm gonna use all of these on uh, my wreath. But that was a crazy story that he told me about. And you know what? When he was telling me about that, I started thinking about uh, the Philippines. I used to have a couple of friends from the Philippines. They were saying that the money wasn't worth the money wasn't much over there, but our money was worth a whole lot more. And I found um, Filipina P, I believe is her channel. Filipine lady, she goes around, you know, uh, asking people different questions and explaining things, how life is over in the Philippines and whatnot, interviewing people. And she was basically saying, one US dollar is like 50 pesos. Uh, they have Filipino pesos over there. So, if you had, like, if you were making, like, two to three thousand dollars a month over there in U.S. dollars, if you were making that or you brought that over there and that's how you were living, you know, two to three thousand U.S. dollars a month, they would consider you, like, rich. Um, I'm like, really? Mind you, two to three thousand dollars over here a month, you would con you'd be considered poor. Or very close to it, depending on your, your area. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. So I'm going to let these dry. Oh, my little anchors. Hmm. What color should I do my little anchors here? I forgot about these. So. And... The people she was interviewing, some of the ladies were saying, you made a thousand a month, you be rich. Some were saying two thousand. Um, some said um, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. So, like just a regular job here at Bucky's. Bucky's pay cashiers like eighteen dollars an hour over here. There are like four or five Bucky's in this area. They pay like four to uh, eighteen dollars an hour for a cashier. Uh, twenty dollars if you work on night shift. There's like a two dollar shift differential, I think it is. Twenty dollars an hour, forty hours a week, eight hundred dollars. Uh, eight hundred dollars a week. Yeah, forty, twenty, eight hundred. That's thirty-two hundred dollars a month. So if you work at Bucky's, and then you took like three weeks of pay over to the Philippines you could live like a king for a month or month and a half over there like a king <laughs> I mean nice nice restaurants you know probably uh, be able to take uber and you know some of those transport apps have a nice nice luxury room or be able to rent a nice uh, you know oceanfront rental for like the time that you're there I mean you'd be able to live it up which is crazy to me let me go and change my color out by painting not painting by cleaning this out and picking another color be right back I have decided to make it like black and white I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit so but uh y'all taking like a month's salary going to a foreign country and be able to live like a king or queen that would be something now I can take a week's pay now and it might last me a couple of hours 
at the casino on a carnival cruise because they get you quick on those boats. Especially when you pick a crappy machine and you're losing your butt off. <laughs> but I had been looking at that and I was like, I'm just to see if there's any like European countries. This is like water. Metallic. No, matted acrylic. This is like water. This white. So I might not be able to use this white. Okay, that's thicker. But, uh, if there's a European country, I would be interested in visiting over there to see if there's any countries in Europe. Probably Eastern Europe, if there is any. To see if there's uh, any countries where the American U.S. dollar goes a long way. But, I know... I spoke to a, uh, a flight attendant back in like 2012, it's been a while, and she was saying that she could go and it was over in Indonesia and then there was also a place, I think she in South America, she could go and have a nice like big delicious dinner and she said it was 25 cents U.S. Now, y'all, this was many, many years ago. Inflation has been outrageous. And also, I cannot remember which country it was. I just know she was saying in Indonesia. And it was like, it wasn't like a five-star restaurant or anything. It's just a nice dinner, as in you get a lot of food and it's good. Not not a five star restaurant or anything like that, um, and it was more like you walk up, tell them what you want. You get a big plate of food. It was really good for that uh, for like twenty five cents. I'm like, what? I was like, no way. She's like, yeah, I've done it. <laughs> I was like, wow. I said you couldn't you couldn't get that over here. You could not get anything like that over here in the U S. Twenty five cents for a delicious meal. The only time. I came across the 25 cents uh, meal. It was when FINA had closed down here in the Fort Worth area. Then they reopened and they had a bunch of specials like come in, you can get 25 cents hot dog or get a 25 cents, you know, uh, candy bar. They only did that for like a little while, but then, <laughs> then they went out of business like for real. Haven't seen FINA in years. But this was like in the late 90s, early 2000s, they did that. But I wonder what happened to FINA. If they're in other states or something now. But yeah, there's no more FINAs here. There's no more FINAs here. And that's the only time I've seen a 25 cents deal, you know, on a on food, like something that might actually hit the spot. But y'all, this white. I'm going to have to go over it a few times. Now, this one I mix white with just a dash of black so it's gray. I'm like, this isn't too bad. But, finding a country to visit, mind you, looking at these different countries, I want to go somewhere, you know, peaceful and beautiful. I'm not going to go to no war-torn country to get, you know, some cheap stuff because I don't want to be dodging no bullets or anything like that but to go to a, like a beautiful country this real scenic mountains forests jungles stuff like that and that's not at war you know pretty safe as in you ain't got to worry about getting shot at you know from some kind of militia or something that would be really nice to find a place like that so I'm going to look into that I'm just curious I want to look into it. I was telling my husband about it. He was like, that would be cool to find a place like that. You know, take a vacation for a while. You know. But, I'm going to look into that. Hmm. Now this grayish, I'm seeing streaks here. So, yeah. But this white one here, 
here is this one. Now this white one, I might just go over it a little bit with this one here to give it a like a gray look. But I'm going to look in, you know, Indonesia and maybe some of the uh, islands over in that part of the world. Okay, my camera cut off on me, but I'm going to look into uh, look into some countries where the U.S. dollar goes a long way. Now this one here has a gray tint to it since I mixed it up. I add more white though. I've been adding more white to it. So it looks really, you know, like shades of gray. But has anybody ever went to a country where the US dollar went a long way and it was like basically didn't cost much of anything to stay over there for like couple of weeks because I was looking at London and France and no <laughs> they are expensive especially London that's crazy like our dollar is worth less at one point like last year the US dollar was worth more than a pound like one pound was one point like two five or one point one two or something dollars but i'm not sure i haven't been keeping up with the currency rates and stuff but if it was like that then it's probably not like that now from what i'm hearing how prices in europe are really going sky high but let me let these dry that's that i don't know if you can see that but I'm going to let these dry and I'm thinking about going ahead and paint my my octopus here. Yeah, I want to paint this uh, different shades of, you know, the turquoise and the aquamarine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep these. And I'm just going to add more. Let me cut this off. I don't want this. And I'm going to paint my octopus here. So let me go clean out my brush. Okay, let me go ahead and add my colors. Add a little bit more of that one. A little bit more of this one. And I think that's enough black and white for right now. But, y'all years and years ago Mexico they was like if you go with a US dollar to Mexico you could live like a king mind you years ago back in like I think 2007 2008 that was the first time I had went on a cruise my mom took me for my birthday and we had went to um, uh, Cozumel and Progreso and, you know, we get out off the boat and go around the different uh, towns, cities, and all that. And we had went to the beach. Well, across the house, across the, across the street was a house that was for rent. And we asked one of the, uh, the people who lived there. He was kind of like a tour guide. We were like, um, how much would that house be? Now, mind you, it was a big white house, probably like four bedrooms, had a gate. It looked like a mansion, like on on the coast, on on the, you know, uh, on the beach. It looked like a mansion. Like it was really, really big. Uh, had gates around it, multiple levels, 
when you walk through the gate, there was like a courtyard and all that stuff. He said um, that house each month, it would be like 1,000 US dollars a month. <laughs> I'm like, really? Wow. I'm going to mix my white here a little bit. And I want to go paint him. But I'm like, wow. I'm not sure how much that would be nowadays. That was like 17 years ago. But uh, $1,000 for beachfront property, multiple levels, uh, multiple levels. <laughs> That's crazy. There's no way you could have gotten that price for a house like that over in the U.S. for $1,000. There's no way. <sighs> and then I'm going to, you know, lighten it up a little bit. So, I will be, like, looking into, I'll be looking into that. Y'all, I'm just all over the place today. I know y'all have to deal with me and my craziness. <laughs> But um, I found this channel on YouTube called Wi Files. And I don't know how that popped up. You know, crazy stuff pops up in your news feed all the time. I don't know how that came about on my news feed on YouTube. But it came about. And I start like, huh. It goes over all the different kinds of uh, conspiracies and theories and all that kind of stuff about uh who built the pyramids and secret um secret pyramids in alaska and the government keeping it hush hush and military you know officials knew about it and once they left the military they tried to let people know what was really going on all that kind of stuff just conspiracy theories you know uh things that happened like in the beginning like biblical type stuff of what happened but is it is explaining things like giants and um what happened to the giants and fossils and skeletons found you know all over the u.s and the name of the different tribes and atlantis and secret continents i'm all into that kind of stuff y'all i'm just like Shh, who knows <laughs> and how aliens came to earth and humans worked for them and there was three pyramids one in Giza and Black Pyramid in Alaska and then there was another one that could create energy basically it was the gas station for the alien spaceships it charged them up and that it could have um, free electric worldwide but no way that the government and you know powers that be able to allow free electric worldwide because these pyramids and whatnot could uh you know charge and uh power the entire earth for free and i'm like you're right and whenever they start saying there was a story and a meeting and god was supposed to come out and explain everything then he vanished without a trace like duh <laughs> they always vanish without a trace hey I found a way that water could power a vehicle so you'll no longer need gas. He's going to come out at 2 o'clock. I wouldn't hold my breath on that. What? He's missing. What happened? Please. A cure-all pill. There's this plant in Australia that can cure all diseases. And they're going to release it to the public. They just have to do one more gathering. Of, what? A fire? It burnt down? The whole thing? Lost? Yeah. <laughs> These rich people ain't going to let you mess up their money. But, I mean, it's some crazy stuff. It's called the Wi Files. And that little fish on there, the heckler fish, that little fish be tripping me out. He has one of those uh, computer generated little AI, CGI fish he be talking to. And that little fish be just going off. <laughs> it's so funny. But those stories, I mean, I be listening to them stories for hours. And I'd be like, it's possible, it's possible.
but you can't put anything past anything nowadays anything could have happened because a lot of stuff has changed because when I was growing up Pluto was the ninth planet Po Pluto they just 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 took poor Pluto away and then it became what some kind of a large body or asteroid or whatever they called I just know they just took poor Pluto's planethood away from it my whole life up until like I was about 20 Pluto was a planet but anyways now they're saying there's a ninth planet actual planet that's far outside of some asteroid belt and that's where the aliens called Anamar or something. That's where they could possibly be from. And they were the ones who basically came to Earth and controlled the Dark Pyramid. It's crazy. I mean, it's rabbit hole after rabbit hole. If y'all are into that kind of stuff. And they also, you know, they were talking about biblical stuff. It, it talks about everything. How places in the Bibles, you know, that they were real, but they could be on different planets and all that kind of stuff. It, it, it's strange. So if y'all are into that stuff, the Y files, and then I start watching <laughs> National Geographic. Uh, this guy named Adam Lynn, and he was going on a uh, different adventures on islands I've never in my life ever heard of over in uh, the Pacific and he was going over you know who built it and like Easter Island who built Easter Island and of course they always go to lost civilizations lost continents aliens and stuff nobody knows but anyways y'all <laughs> I've been all over the place lately when it comes to uh, different theories on different stuff. But I'm going to basically mix up the aquamarine and turquoise around the edge here. And this, since it has, you know, openings and whatnot and designs, can't add my little googly eyes that I was thinking about uh, adding because it would look crazy. Mind you, probably would have looked crazy <laughs> anyways with googly eyes, but I was going to try it, but no, it won't look right since he got openings in his face. A little octopus fella here. But I am going to add some kind of, you know, contrast to it, like maybe a you know blacken up the edges or something like that or maybe try to make it kind of rusticy looking or something I'm going to do something to it but this turquoise and this uh, aquamarine is, marine color is so pretty to me but y'all Y-Files and National Geographic you know those different uh those different stories and adventures and it's amazing how many places you've never heard of because that island that he was on when he was uh when he was he was trying to find out how how the island was there with these giant um it looked like it used to be you know a city there but the city was long gone and there was ruins there and he was trying to figure out okay how big the ruins were because they were like how in the world could somebody possibly have you know created this you know thousands and thousands of years ago like the pyramids they're like how did they do that that's why it was oh no a pulley system could have did it oh a bunch of slaves could have did it or aliens could have did it you know they don't know they're just guessing and he was like, how was this possible? And uh, 
he had to go do this ritual because the uh, the island had a king and people have went there trying to you know uh, explore and excavate you know they're like oh we just gonna look around they like well you got to go to the king and get the permission no oh, we're just gonna look around they ended up you know they're like no nah, we don't play that we got customs we got traditions you know either fall in line or be gone y'all remember hearing about how that one man went to that island and he was trying to bring Christianity to that people and they had said no no one goes to that island leave it alone he's like nah nah I'm gonna bring the Lord to them and they that fella like things are done a certain way over here in the states probably where you were born and raised but just because they do it like that over here other places you know they don't care nothing about our rules, laws, regulations, customs, and whatnot over here. You do it their way or else. But he had to go through this whole procedure, his this whole ritual, and they finally said, okay, you know, you can go and you can explore this, that, and then he went. And he was like, what would have happened if I wouldn't have done that? And they, they were like, oh, yeah, people who don't do that, yeah, usually they ended up, you know, <laughs> out of here permanently and he's like are you serious he's like yeah that's just how it is over here you know we got customs we got rules and you gotta go by it or else and he's like ooh okay <laughs> but huh I just finished painting this so next thing I'm going to do I'm gonna get some of this black and maybe a little bit of the white and just go around the edges and maybe uh, maybe around some of the town you know just try to add some contrast to it but uh, National Geographic and that Y files really the Y files for me National Ge Geographic is cool looking at all the different places that in civilizations you never even thought of that are long gone but that Y files is rabbit hole after rabbit hole and my thing is some of the theory something like that could have happened and some of them's like I'm like oh that's crazy no way because one that really perked me up one uh one story he was going over was basically the lost city of Atlantis ever since I was little I've been fascinated with Atlantis and he was saying Atlantis could have been in, uh, like, right there off of India and, you know, India, Australia, all that, that there was a lost continent. It was Atlantis there in Lum Lumeria, Lumeria, or something like that. Atlantis was like the world they need to be dominated, controlled, and Lumeria, Lumeria, I can't think of the name of it, something with an L. They were like, no, let them be and grow and, you know, continue on doing their own thing. And then they went to war. They said Atlantis was wiped out and only 10,000 of the Lum Lumerian people survived. And they ended up, I think, I don't want to mix up the stories. I'm going to have to look into that. I'll let y'all know. But uh, they survived. But the continent that Atlantis and Lum Lumer, Lumeria, whatever it was, sunk into the ocean because they found ferrets, I think it was, muskrats, ferrets, some animal. And they were like, there's no way these animals should be on three different, like, continents. The only way that's possible is if there was some missing land where they could have been travel traveling on that's no longer there. Like... There's no way they could be in India, Australia, and West Africa, well, East Africa, unless there was a landmass in between them that they could have walked over to get to all these lands. But right now it's ocean, so they're like, how did that, how did that happen? How did that happen? I like, well, could have been something there thousands and thousands of years ago. Now, let's see how I'm going to do this. I don't want to mess it up. Gonna darken this up a little bit. But I don't wanna mess it up, so. 
you know what? I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to do this. I have a feeling if I try to darken it up, I'm going to mess it up. So, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I am done so but y'all I can get lost down them rabbit holes in a minute and my thing is the way I think is like could happen maybe it did who knows who knows nobody was there there's all kinds of references of different stuff like dragons people all oh, know dragons that's a fairy tale that's a myth and they're like, well, how come all these different cultures from all over the world, separated by thousands and thousands of years, it's not like they were neighbors and they talked like somebody over in southern, you know, uh, South America, you know, down that way, somebody in northern Africa, another one over in, you know, East Asia. They all got the same, you know, um, graphics and depictions in their history of like dragons like the uh, Chinese calendar they say they got all these cats rats snakes all this all real animals but suddenly they want to throw a mythical creature the dragon in there too come on now like hmm, it's possible you know that it could be real and then um, like over in uh, South America there's you know, like cave drawings and temple drawings and even down in uh, like Italy, you know, uh, the Vatican and, you know, ancient like Christian um, like churches and stuff like that. They have pictures of different, uh, different creatures and similar to dragons. So who knows? Who knows? That's my, that's my thoughts on most stuff. Who knows? It's possible. I just don't get why people will go to war because somebody thinks something different from them. Like, eh, let bygones be bygones. You do you. You do you. Okay. I'm finished for real, y'all. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry. Here's how it's looking. I'm going to let this dry and I will see y'all tomorrow. Okay, everybody, I am back and it's a few days later and all my pieces, I decided to add like a little eye on my seahorses and everything is dry and I thought I had ruined it all. Once I had finished painting it, I wanted like a glossy seal on it. So I had picked up some spray Mod Podge gloss and I got it from an estate sale so I didn't I don't know how old it was. So I sprayed it on there to give it a nice shimmery gloss. It ended up being like super glue <laughs> spray. I'm like, no. So I had to get the Mod Podge uh the liquid, you know, the white paste and put it over each one and hope that it could be saved because when I had sprayed the Mod Podge stuff on it, it had turned it into like layers of super glue. Everything was super sticky and got everywhere. And it wasn't like covering it like it should have. It just like automatically dried and turned into glue. I'm like, no. So I was able to salvage all my little pieces with the Mod Podge. It's dry. I was going to use this anchor, but I was like trying to figure out how to wrap that up neatly. I've seen pictures and videos of the anchor wrap. I don't like any of those. So for the anchor, I might just outline it with some rope. But for this project, I am going to weave my, uh, I think this is 14 inch frame. I'm going to weave it and then I'm going to add my pieces, a shell, well, several shells and a bow using these different color ribbons and I may put a few 
ribbon bundles on it but that's how I'm gonna do this one I could not for the life of me find a sign I ran to Hobby Lobby I ran to Joann's and I went to like five different Dollar Trees just looking for any kind of sign that was like ocean sea thing I didn't want to get a summertime when I just I wanted something you know specific I would have to order it online and I didn't want to so <laughs> this will not have a sign but it's gonna be decorative so let me go ahead and start weaving this around and then I'm gonna speed it up and show y'all what it looked like weaved okay so I hot glued it down across down the back of the crossbar so let me zoom in and show y'all how I do this so what I'm going to do when I weave it I'm going to go over under over under and then just pull the rope now it's a lot of pulling when you first start off the rope is nine and a half feet so you got to pull it all through and then you go up the other side right here and then you go over under over under and you pull this one through and you just do this all the way around so. just like this So now I'm going to speed it up and finish up this entire wreath frame. Okay, take four. I already wrapped this little piece right here. Then I decided it takes too long and I stabbed myself on these little sharp corners. So the rest of it, I'm going to use this tan color ribbon and go all the way around it. I also have wanted to get it give it a sandy kind of color behind it so that's why I wanted to use the nautical rope so I like the color and this this ribbon is about the same color so what I'm going to do I have the nautical rope up top here and then all the way around I'm going to use the ribbon to wrap it and then I'm going to add all of my little pieces to it so let me go ahead and finish wrapping this up I have a bunch of ribbon here that I cut off. I have a huge uh, 50 foot or 50 yard roll. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just wrap this around. final look nicely wrapped a lot quicker than the weave look but I really do like the weave look but this is nice and clean looking I don't know where I left off I don't know where I left off the video for some reason it keeps stopping on me uh, but this is the design that I want you know I want all my pieces right here so I just tied my ribbon at the top of the wreath for the door hanger and now I'm going to hot glue all my pieces and I'm going to add my bow right over here so let me go ahead before the video stops again for some reason and add all of my um, my pieces Here it is. 
this so far. And next, I'm going to add me a bow right over here. I don't need any bundles. Put this to the side. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to get my ribbon out. I'm going to use this one, this one, and this one. I'm thinking I'm just going to use these three. This would be pretty also, but it's going to be super glittery and I'm not in the mood for glitter right now, so. Y'all, I am so glad I was able to save my painted pieces because that Mod Podge spray that was probably old as me <laughs> it had completely like ruined it in my eyes I was supposed to throw them in the trash but I was like no how can I salvage it so I got me a little thing of Mod Podge let me show you this from Dollar Tree saved the day usually I have a big one but when I'm at Dollar Tree I just get happy and just start grabbing stuff and I'm so glad because my big one is old too and I'm not sure how long all of these uh, pastes and paints and sprays and all that stuff last. I just pull it out, use it, and see how it goes. I need to start testing stuff to make sure I don't ruin my project by putting something that that's no good on it. <laughs> but what I'm going to do now is make me a bow and I'm going to make me a mini bow it's not gonna be that big so what I am thinking here is it's going to be 18 inches of ribbon so I'm going to cut 18 inches of ribbon and I'm gonna cut two of each one so a total of six this is really pretty I also have like a turquoise looking color uh, with this print somewhere over there I didn't feel like looking for it and this has Anchor, starfish, and seashell. Perfect thing for my nautical reef here. And y'all, today is June something. <laughs> I think it's like June the uh, 13th. Around June the 13th. I had been feeling so hot. I wasn't going to do any more videos, but this one I might put it out on Friday if not then on Tuesday but it's been really slow this summer as in video views I think everybody's out for the summer doing different activities with their families and vacationing and all that so what I'm thinking let me dovetail an end on here what I'm thinking is I may go to one video a week until fall because fall I have a million different projects that I uh, have been thinking about and the holidays uh, Christmas time ton of different projects but it's really slow and it takes a while for me to make the video and edit it and all that and I want to be able to uh, you know do some videos that get more than like 10 views <laughs> so the view count has been down compared to uh earlier this year and of course the holiday season everyone's always looking to make some uh different crafts and projects for craft fairs and around their homes and gifts and all that stuff but and also y'all just to go back to work on monday um 
as in a regular nine to five. So my time will be limited because I'm gonna have some really long shifts. Went ahead and grabbed my Chanel stem so and my uh, zip tie. So what I'm going to do is I want my loops to be about five inches. So I'm going to go over to the from the one inch mark folded to the 12 inch mark and then go up to the 11. So this will make it roughly about five inches. And then I just put it right there. And then next, I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. One inch, fold it to the 12 inch mark. And then go up to about 11. And then just, and I'm gonna do that for all of this. got it all right here so let me add my zip tie and don't forget before you do it all the way I need my Chanel stem in there I've forgotten that so many times and nice and snug and I can just snip Now all I have to do is just fluff. And you know what? I am going to shorten. I'm going to shorten my um, my tails. They're too long for this so so let me go ahead and fluff this up some and let me hang it up so y'all get a better view okay everybody and here it is let me get a close-up here's the bow and this is my nautical reef so if y'all have any comments or questions drop them below please subscribe turn on the notification bell i know shameless plug and i'll talk to you later bye